Good morning, General Counsel. I am joined this morning by one of our global partners who is here joining us for General Counsel 43. Welcome to John Gachumu, who is here representing the Organization of African Instituted Churches. Welcome, John. Thank you. John is one of many global partners who are here for our meeting. And, and I want to thank you firstly, John, for being here, for representing your organization, for being in partnership with the United Church. Now, I'm wondering if you could start us off by telling our viewers a bit about the Organization for African Instituted Churches. The Organization of African Institute and Churches was founded in 1978 in Cairo, Egypt. The formation was pioneered by the Coptic Church when the Bishop Antonius Marcos, who was stationed in Nairobi, gathered information about the leadership of African independent churches and got help from a CMS uh, scorer, David Barrett, who helped him to contact various readers of African independent churches from various African countries. And that brought together a conference in Cairo in 1978, November, of more than 20 senior leaders of African independent churches from across Africa. Yes. And how long have you been with the organization? Wow, for a long time. Mm -hmm. I started working with the Organization of African Institute and Churches in 1995, January. So yesterday, uh, or actually it was two days ago now, we were both in um, a workshop that was presented by Adrian Jacobs, uh, the one about the snakes. Do you remember being in that workshop? Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and you shared um, some words about what it means to you to be in partnership with the United Church and some of the similarities between um, the United Church's work, especially with indigenous churches, and, and what that, how that resonates with your work with instituted churches in Africa. Can you say a little bit about that? Okay, the history of African institute and churches goes back to the 19th century, the beginnings of 19th century. And uh, this is about the time when uh, most of African countries were colonized, particularly by the uh, British, uh, were British colonies, rather. And uh, the founding of African independent churches uh, was a protest, first of all, um, for local control of access to divine and also uh, for independence of African states, land, and also economy mm. of the countries. But more importantly, propagation of culture. Now, when I look and compare with the First Nations uh, Aboriginal ministries, um, there is a lot of similarity because these are the people who are rising up to reclaim their space. And talking about the space is not just a space which we can call a place to feel at home, but a place to feel that you belong, a place to feel that you are where you are supposed to be and you are interacting with the divine mm -hmm. as yourself. And so what does it look like to be in relationship? Um, I'm thinking the instituted independent churches in Africa. What's that relationship like with the Christian churches that were formed out of a colonial history? Up to the late 70s, beginning to 90s, there was still some tension. And I would uh, probably explain this with my own self. When in 1983, I wanted to join a theological institution and I was admitted in an Anglican uh, provincial college, as they call it, St. Andrew's Institute for Mission and Evangelism, which is not far from where I come from, the elders of my church resisted and said, you cannot join a calling of a church that rivaled us. 
during the struggle for independence for our country, Kenya. And that made me to join another far-located theological college founded by the Church of God in East Africa, which has its roots in Anderson, Indiana. That showed that up to that time, there was a kind of tension between the churches. But lately from the mid-90s, there has been some understanding as the African independent churches is starting to work on reaching out other churches in the ecumenical movement. And the interactions now and the fellowship with mainline churches is very cordial in the experience that I've had even at working, even in working at the Organization of African Institute and Churches. We advise leaders of churches to take students at schools like St. Paul's uh, University, uh, the, 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 the um, Methodist College that is uh, part of the Methodist University in Kenya, and even to other conventional institutions that are sponsored by mainline historical churches. Such a rich history, such important work. Uh, so, and you are here representing the organization as a global partner with the United Church. Yes. And I'm just wondering if you could say a few words about what you're experiencing here at General Council 43 and any words of hope that you have to offer to the United Church as we gather for this important meeting of our denomination. Um, one, it is a very good experience that I'm gathering, particularly from the uh, Aboriginal groups when I attended the Sunrise uh, Ceremony, uh, which I learned and uh, experienced a very articulate people who are willing to tell their story and, uh, you know, and show their experiences and practices uh, with, without fear and with that kind of confidence, which I feel is a big lesson. Uh, sometimes I wonder whether we in Africa got brainwashed uh, by the colonial rule that sometimes even when we want to speak about ourselves, there is that kind of fear and when we fear, we lose the power to articulate with confidence who we are. Whereas here, I find it to be, uh, you know, it's done in such a way that you feel yourself in it and you'd wish that uh, you are able to do it that way. Uh, certainly, I wish to appreciate the work that the United Church of Canada is doing. Uh, because when I uh, look at the relationship between the United Church of Canada and the Aboriginal ministries, I, I see a lot of uh, solidarity from United Church of Canada to the Aboriginal ministries, and that seems also to have strengthened the Aboriginal ministries' willingness, you know, to give their stories without fear. Uh, this uh, goes along, of course, to show that uh, critical solidarity with a people is very important uh, because it makes them to engage without feeling or being seen as if they are victims of something that is not acceptable in the wider society. Well, thank you so much for being here, for representing the Organization of African Instituted Churches, for sharing your perspectives, your lens, and we'll continue to look forward to being in partnership and in solidarity. Thank you so thank much, you Venerable. Very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. General Counsel will continue to join you throughout the rest of the day with more stories here from General Counsel 43.